Hi students. It's really good to be with you today. I've missed you. I've missed coming to school um, and hope you and your families are doing well. Um, I've been taking lots of walks um, and one thing I've noticed and maybe you've noticed it too, maybe you've even done this yourself, is that in some of the homes there are bears um, in the windows and people have signs saying bear hunt and greetings and, and it made me think about um, teddy bears that we have in our own house. And my daughters are older, they're not living at home anymore. And it just made me think about um, our bears are actually in storage up in the attic. And it made me think about one of the favorite books that my daughters and I used to read called Old Bear. And I'm gonna share it with you today. So Old Bear is written by uh, Jane Hissey. She also did the illustrations, just like you illustrate your books and writings. It wasn't anybody's birthday, but Bramwell Brown had a feeling that today was going to be a special day. He was sitting thoughtfully on the windowsill with his friends, Duck, Rabbit, and Little Bear, when he suddenly remembered that someone wasn't there who should be. A very long time ago, he had seen his good friend, Old Bear, being packed away in a box. Then he was taken up a ladder through a trap door and into the attic. The children were being too rough with him and he needed somewhere safe to go for a while. Has he been forgotten, do you think? Bramwell asked his friends. I think he might have been, said Rabbit. Well, said Little Bear, isn't it time he came back down with us? The children are older now and would look after him properly. Let's go and get him. What a marvelous idea, said Bramwell. But how can we rescue him? It's a long way up to the attic and we haven't got a ladder. We could build a tower of blocks, suggested Little Bear. Rabbit collected all the blocks and the others set about building the tower. It grew very tall and Little Bear was just putting on the last block when the tower began to wobble. Look out, he cried as the whole thing came tumbling down. Never mind, said Bramwell, helping Little Bear to his feet. We'll just have to think of something else. Let's try making ourselves into a tower, said Duck. Good idea, said Bramwell. Little Bear climbed on top of Rabbit's head and Rabbit hopped onto Duck's beak. They stretched up as far as they could but then Duck opened his beak to say something. Rabbit wobbled and they all collapsed on top of Bramwell. Sorry, said Duck. Perhaps that wasn't a very good idea. Not one of your best, replied Bramwell from somewhere underneath the heap. I know, said Rabbit. Let's, tie, let's try bouncing on the bed. I trust you to think of that, said Bramwell. You never can resist a little bit of bouncing, especially when it's not allowed. Rabbit climbed onto the bed and began to bounce up and down. The others joined him. They bounced higher and higher, but still they couldn't reach the trap door in the ceiling. Duck began to cry. Oh dear, he sobbed. What are we going to do now? We'll never be able to rescue old bear and he'll be stuck up there getting lonelier and lonelier forever and ever. We mustn't give up, said Bramwell firmly. Come on, little bear, you're good at ideas. But little bear had already noticed the plant 
in the corner of the room. I've got it, he cried. I could climb up this plant, swing from the leaves, kick the trap door open and jump in. In case it wobbled, Bramwell Brown, Duck and Rabbit studied the pot. Little Bear bravely climbed up the plant until he reached the very top leaf. He took hold of it and started to swing to and fro, but he swung so hard that the leaf broke and he went crashing down. Luckily, Bramwell Brown was right underneath to catch him in his paws. Oh, that was a rotten idea, said Little Bear. What was I thinking, said Duck. Was that it is a pity I can't fly very well, as I could have been quite a help. Aha, said Bramwell. That, my dear Duck, has given me a very good idea. I really think this one might work. What do you think it will be? In the corner of the playroom was a little wooden airplane with a propeller that went round and round. We could use this plane to get to the trap door, said Bramwell. Rather dangerous, I know, but Quite honestly, I can't bear to think of Old Bear up there alone for a minute longer. I'll be the pilot, said Rabbit, hopping up and down, making airplane noises. And I'll stand on the back and push the trap door open with my paintbrush, said Little Bear. But how will you get down, asked Duck. I've already thought of that, said Bramwell, who hadn't really but quickly did. They can use these handkerchiefs as parachutes, and we'll catch them in a blanket. Bramwell gave Little Bear two big handkerchiefs and a flashlight so he could see into the attic. Then he began to wind up the propeller of the plane. Rabbit and Little Bear climbed aboard, and Bramwell began, began the countdown. Five! Four, three, two, one, zero. They were off. The plane whizzed along the carpet and flew up into the air. The little plane flew beautifully. And the first time they passed the trap door, Little Bear was able to push the lid open with his paintbrush. Then Rabbit circled the plane again this time very close to the hole. Little Bear grabbed the edge and with a mighty heave, he pulled himself inside. He got out his flashlight and looked around. The attic was very dark and quiet, full of boxes, old clothes and dust. He couldn't see Old Bear at all. Any bears in here? He whispered and stood still to listen. From somewhere quite near, he heard a muffled Rrr, followed by, Did somebody say something? Little Bear moved a few things aside, and there, propped up against a cardboard box and covered in dust, was Old Bear. There he is. Little Bear jumped up and down with excitement. Old Bear, Old Bear, I found Old Bear, he shouted. So you have, said Old Bear. Have you been lonely, asked Little Bear. Quite lonely, said Old Bear, but I've been asleep a lot of the time. Well, said Little Bear kindly, would you like to come back to the playground, to the playroom with us now? That would be lovely, replied Old Bear. But how will we get down? Don't worry about that, said Little Bear. Bramwell has thought of everything. He's given us these handkerchiefs to use as parachutes. Good old Bramwell, said the old teddy. 
I'm glad he didn't forget me. Old Bear stood up and shook the dust out of his fur, and Little Bear helped him into his parachute. They went over to the hole in the ceiling. Ready, shouted Duck. Steady, or excuse me, ready, shouted Rabbit. Steady, shouted Duck. Go, shouted Bramwell Brown. The two bears leapt bravely from the hole in the ceiling. Their handkerchief parachutes opened out and they floated gently down, landing safely in the blanket. Welcome home, old bear, said Bramwell Brown, patting his friend on the back. The others patted him too, just to make him feel at home. It's nice to have you back, they said. It's nice to be back, replied Old Bear. That night, when all the animals were tucked in bed, Bramwell thought about the day's adventures and looked at the others. Rabbit was dreaming exciting dreams about bouncing as high as an airplane. Duck was dreaming that he could really fly and was rescuing bears from all sorts of high places. Little Bear was dreaming of all the interesting things he had seen in the attic. And Old Bear was dreaming about the good times he would have now that he was back with his friends. I knew it was going to be a special day, said Bramwell Brown to himself the end. Okay. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a special day too. Bye-bye.